Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the SeerCast. I am I'm Kerrigan, or Epi Knight, and with me today is Nodi Man. Hi. Orange. Hello. Captain Lime. So that's what Nodi sounds like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fangride or Amaska. Howdy, hey. Kitten. Hello. Robo. Hello. For a little bit, Gina. Mysteries of the Madrid 8 is confirmed. <laughs> and, and Walter is in the chat, as always. Alright, so we have... It's been a little while for us. Um, we didn't have a whole lot to cover in the, in the in November after yeah, RuneFest. Like yeah, and we meant to cover... We meant to just do a quick one about the, the aftermath of the Barrows and the community features, but we didn't... But the, our schedules didn't line up, so... We'll Plus, they kind of totally lied about... Barrows having lore right off the bat. Yeah, well... <laughs> there was, like, nothing to talk about anyway. Yeah, well, I mean, it would have been nice to talk about some of the mechanics and stuff oh, before yeah. now, but... Oh, well. So we'll, we'll, we have yeah. some of the stuff in November to cover, and then we'll talk about um, the Zamorak the Zamorak lore podcast and the upcoming BTS, which is a little bit underwhelming. But we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, just a quick mention of the D&D tracker. It's kind of been wanted by a lot of people for a long time, especially for D&D's like familiarization, which you couldn't find your time anywhere if you look. Uh, yeah. 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 I had that problem like with random. summoning. The only way you could do that is if you had NPC contact and just like kept it on you while you're doing yeah. slayer test or something. Yeah. Every like five minutes, just ping him like, "Hey." <laughs> yeah. And then, course, and then of course you go to get some food, and when you come back, it's already happened. Yeah. yeah. So and not only that, but you, but with your reset, like familiarization, it had nowhere you could check when your reset was. So. Because so it was like an eight-day rolling, and it was really, it was really strange. Like the, mm-hmm. I think they've, I think they fixed that. So. It was incredibly irritating to say the least. Yep. So that's yeah. that's a very useful thing they added. Um, but it's very it, useful. I actually used it. Yep. I did too. I I haven't been in game enough to use it, but if I was, I absolutely would have. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and move right in on, uh, move on into the barrows. Um, Ma'am. Ob- yeah. Hi, Gina. Uh, the Barrows, the Barrows Rise of the Six was updated um, at the beginning of the month, and it is Chris L's latest super boss. It requires the player to defeat the original six Barrows brothers in teams of four, and they. And when they say defeat, they really mean die about fifty times over before finally just scraping out a kill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pretty yeah. Much. Yeah. Uh, it's. 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 An interesting, it's an interesting concept. The the stuff behind it is is pretty cool. I, from what I can hear, I kind of like that it's not EOC spammy. Gina can tell us a little bit more about that, but <coughs> I'm actually what do you mean by EOC spammy? Well, like it spams the mechanics of EOC. It's it's more of a it's more of a pre EOC fight, if anything. Yeah. I, yeah, I think is. this could have happened in pre EOC and. Pretty much the same. I would agree. Yeah. Sure. Aside from the fact that they're just some kind of bonus special, you know, stun abilities, that's really about it. Yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, oh well, maybe. Yeah, yeah but like, aside from the one, uh, one or two little mechanics, it's not like it's critical to stun or it's critical to provoke no. or cr- critical to do anything. Like oh, that. Dear, if it was yep. pre EOC, that'd just be like instant impossible because they're all about like instant chaos. Oh yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So even with like, I really like, appreciate that everything about this boss fight is not you know, you don't do this and we will insta kill you. That's what annoys me so much about the Calfi King, even though yeah. he's like yeah, so much. Yeah, you have a Even though he's so much more nerfed, it's just the fact that there is an instant kill on him because they couldn't think of a cleverer mechanic. <laughs> I don't oh, know. I just think well, way more just to kill the cow Maybe that's like, what I uh, like so much about this fight: the whole you do stuff and then you don't die. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because you play smart, you don't die. Not because you spam X ability at X time. 
Yes. Um, something that is. What did you say? Barrows. Barrows is damage spam, but it's not yes. insta kill. It's not, it's not guaranteed spells, <laughs> but very high kill potential. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. It has a high kill potential, of course, but it's not like if you don't stun at this time or you don't provoke at this time. Then you're high. I don't know. I think I must have been on the wrong boss or something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I don't know about you, but if I don't move one area, I'm dead in like three seconds. Yeah. So, oh yeah. yeah same with me. Mean mean to stand there. But it's it's not like it has a specific thing that you have to do. It doesn't have a one hit KO attacks. move. Yeah. <laughs> but at least for the Calpha King, it's only that one attack that is the one oh, hit yeah. kill. Like with the barrels, it's like everyone. Just about yeah, everyone. Pretty much everyone can kill dangerous. you. If you don't move. Yeah, I suicided in there and died within probably five seconds. Yeah, I walked Because in of spinny, 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 spinny. Oh, yeah, I, I did multiple suicides just because I love Barrow so much. <laughs> I, oh, one, I, I think I lasted one versus six for a good uh, at least 60 seconds. Nice. How much food did you have on you? Oh, I used all my food. I didn't get hit by specs. I seriously just tanked it. Bad food until I ran out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was oh my like God, running around totally, the entire perimeter or whatever. That totally reminds me. I was in a dungeon yesterday with Extramarital, and I realized that I can actually use Rock Tails now. I feel like such a high level PVMer now. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Hammond Scott, you're so pro. I know. <laughs> Demi <Anyways>. pros. <laughs> okay, so yeah. one little thing about my suicides. Mm-hmm. I never yeah. got into the shadow realm. It's like someone just stuck a big access to die and my face. <laughs> <laughs> Gina's already in the Shadow Realm, let's be honest. She'll not Shadow Realm. None for you. Yeah. Alright, oh it's worth mentioning that Akrasay was left out, and there's quote unquote an obvious reason, and that's that it's, it brings the number from 6 to 7, which creates just a really wonky fight. Plus, he like stands yeah. up at the wall all the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's hiding in the corner like Kazard. Um. Yeah, he's standing. He's standing above the fight, just watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's day. like Dominion Tower. He can just spectate. But there is, yes. but there is a lore reason that they came up with, and that is that slisky has been experimenting with the souls of the six, and because there's a family tie between those six, they were able to absorb the power. They were able to do that, and Akrasa just was like, just got noped. On the <laughs> other hand, it also though, if you do think about it. Akrase is, like, officially a Barrow's brother no matter what now, because yeah. we're in the Sixth Age and Rodham's mm-hmm. the Fifth Age. But he doesn't have so. a family tie to the actual oh, yeah. Sixth so I, I Brothers. Just, in, in a general term. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. It's so weird you, that he is still a reward from, um... Like the reward. From Rodham, because yeah. technically he's, he's a Barrow's brother for everybody no matter what. Don't so what you, what you mean to tell me is... We just need to turn five of uh, Akrasay's family into whites, and then we can have another boss. Yes. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I like how sure. this, is, this is somehow the, more The white. temple bros. Get, like, a bunch of temple knights that he worked with. Temple okay, I <laughs> nice can support. Oh, dear. Let's murder them all. Oh, dear. <laughs> what have I started? <laughs> what have I done? A Zamorakian <laughs> uprising. <laughs> And then the next month, Sir Tiffy the Deadly. (laughs) (laughs) Sir Tiffy the old guy that is surviving the dead. (laughs) (laughs) Bad boss, no! Oh my god. Oh my god. Just, ah, that's just so bad. Anyways. Yeah. About it. Uh, so well, uh, so yeah, that's that's an interesting little wrinkle to it. Um, the rewards were a new set of <clears throat> a new set of melee gear, um, which is created by the what is it, the malevolent uh, energy, yep. and then level ninety shields. So don't forget the Gina. Uh, oh, oh, and the, oh, and the bobbleheads. Oh, I can't like, forget the bobbleheads. Heads, yay! They're like little barrows cheerleaders. Oh, dear oh, God. They God. dance! That dance is just... So it's funny. so cute! Oh, my God. And they run God. in a circle and spell pharaohs! <laughs> it's so funny! <laughs> oh, <laughs> that hurt. That hurt so much. It hurt my voice. Oh, dear God. It's like they know Carol's the most difficult, so they had him do the chant. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I love it. The manliest of the man. Yeah. In case people didn't know from before, Krill is my favorite brother. <laughs> <laughs> this is and this now is even true. More so. <clears throat> but yeah, so that so that it when you get all six Barrows brother bobbleheads in I don't know, do they have to interact? Do you have to like click them they to interact to or do they just have to be around? I believe they just need to connect to you. Yeah, they do they do a special animation or two special animations. Um it's hilarious. and Oh dear god, it's it is It's hilarious. It is it is funny. Um I I will leave that I might leave that in the comments because I don't think I can put that in a video or in the video. But um <laughs> Oh, yeah, and the Barrows, unlike a lot of the other bosses recently, uh, they don't drop a lore book because <laughs> they realize most lore fans don't like having to kill super bosses for lore books. Um, yeah. Yeah. See, my well, problem is then they, 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 keep, they keep saying this and then they keep not adding lore anywhere else. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, they, with the Caliphate like, King, they, they talked about all this you know, background lore about it and the BTS and then it comes out and you can't find any of that lore in the game. Like, well, we can't make it drop it, so, uh, where do we... Okay, just stick on the walls. Just yeah, on yeah. The walls of the chamber. Just, just on the wall of the chamber. Ta-da. Read me. Gina wants me to mention the examines, but I'm not sure exactly what examines she wants me to, because she spammed me with them. Oh, fine. I'll go find them myself. You, you, I... I'm just like, did Gina write some of these examines? <laughs> <laughs> Slisky probably knows where this leads. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, but the um, but there's there have been complaints about the level ninety shields being underwhelming at best, <laughs> and no effect, of course. So they're just oh okay. He, he, I, I found my examines. Go on. There, there, the, the apparently the examiner of the pets is a failed attempt at creating a wife. Oh dear. Aww. I'm disappointed. <laughs> Can we fail oh, yeah. more? It also says cute, cute though, at the end. It says yeah. cute at the end, but. Well. Yeah. <laughs> also, the exam of the well is still jumped out well. <laughs> you know what I? You know what I like to think? Like what that exam says though, is that the energy that we're getting as a drop is literally the magic that Slisky uses to make whites. Okay, I need one now. Oh dear. No. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Cutest and, magic ever. <laughs> and then we're making really creepy looking armor. Out of it. Yeah. <clears throat> The level of armor is nice, um, and is exactly what you would expect out of the level 90 power stuff. Um, how much is the... How much does it require to make the armor? I can't it remember. is, let's see, 42 malevolent right. energy for the top. Uh, just a second, I had the other two open. Give me a second. Kind Where of a it? lot. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's not exactly... And considering uh, it degrades the dust... There are yeah. 40, 42 for the top, 14 for the helm, and 28 for the legs. So it's 90 total, 80 total. Yes, yes. yes At 84, 84 total, and it takes 6 reinforcing points. Yeah. So it's so not... To, to make the full set from scratch, it takes about 123. It's not too bad, but it, considering it degrades to dust, that's not too bad. How much is tectonic, and how and is there... And sirenic is roughly the same, right? Yep. They're the exact same amounts, but the value of them are different. That's what I'm talking about, the value. I will pull those open real quick. <clears throat> For some reason, the wiki is not... Is being slow? In that regard. Yeah. No, um, they, they don't have the tab at the bottom of the level 90. Ah, uh, gotcha. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> Sirenic is actually hilariously cheap. Like the, <laughs> well, they, the, uh, yeah. they've the messed around. The 52 mil. Yeah, they've messed around with the diff with the drop rate of Cyrenic, and but I think we'll talk about that in a little it's bit. Too much. But. Yeah, the uh, malevolent grace, uh, the top, the chest plate is 169, almost 170 mil alone. Mm. To buy a full set of Cyrenic, it's barely over 100 mil. Yeah. I will then, not comment on whatever it takes to make the pets. They even cut it in half. Tectonic. Yeah, that was it's 250 now. Uh, tectonic armor is 129 mil. <coughs> Oh, you mean so we've got Only some seriously messed up GE prices. Walter is posting GE prices in the chat, and they are nowhere near what is lining up with with uh, really? what's being I'm said. Curious. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting on the wiki, looking at the current GE prices. Is um, 
Are the prices based on the materials to make it or actually buying the individual thing? Because I know when oh. um, when Tectonic was out, it was laughably cheaper than the actual set if you just bought the energy. Yeah. Yeah, okay, buying the armor itself. Okay, that's that's still hilarious because it's like tectonic, twelve mil, thirty nine, twenty seven. Yeah, I'm guessing helm, body, legs, or something. Yeah, probably. Sirenic, twelve, twelve, forty nine, twenty six, and malevolent, twenty two, sixty seven, forty two. Holy crap! Yeah, Sirenic, okay. Sirenic scales sell for about one million each. Um, the GE price is about one point six, but they're not gonna sell for that. Yeah, it's they're <laughs> I've dropping. Been, I've been getting a good chunk of them from uh, the uh, gladiuses that I've been killing. Are not selling for 1.6 million. Yeah. Um, <coughs> which means that to make the full set of Sirenics, it's about 68 million. That's not and too bad. Which is, which is not bad at all. It's actually cheaper than the full, than the armor being sold. Um, Tectonics, mm. let's see, where is. The Tectonic Energy appears to be about 1.2 mil each. So pretty much every single one of them is actually cheaper to buy the energy and make it. But you require a pretty high level, and yeah, so that that's makes that yeah, that kind of makes sense, <clears throat> especially because it degrades to dust. Exactly, yeah. The fact that it degrades actually made me think it would get even cheaper because of how cheap Tetsu got. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. <clears throat> God. Okay. okay. It is level ninety armor. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, we do. Anyways, use a bucket on that well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh man. That is Looking my for a good time, bucket. use bucket on well. Yes, just do it. Um, use it, empty it, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't even explain in this podcast. Just go and do it and laugh. It's yes. Great. Okay, and um, but as I was saying about the shields, uh, they're worse than spirit shields because they don't want to do anything that obsoletes said spirit shields. Yep. Okay. But like. Oh, like they have, better, they have better stats, of course, but it's just they don't have a special effect, which yep. means they're just nowhere near as I mean, Because the damage reduction on spirit shields is just so much better. Yeah. <clears throat> the only logical thing I can see for them not to obsolete spirit shields would be to raise the stats for spirit shields to be like 90. Or they could just which would be really shields. unfair. Um, potentially, I mean, these level 90 shields have to make them obsolete. They're just not, they're just not yeah, it doesn't yeah. make sense by what they're talking about with all of the other all of the other stuff that they have that they put forth with regards to gear tiers that a level seventy pair that a level seventy shield should be better than a level ninety shield. I mean Nothing. I, I understand them wanting to make the corp worth it, but yep. the corp has been so easy to kill. What they could do is uh, just make the spirit shields be required to make the level ninety shields. See, um, when when it was first launched, Chris L was actually saying that you would need the dungeoneering shields to make the um to make the new shields, but yeah, I mean, that's not the case. I think the spirit shields are better for that because chaos. Yeah, because it was an untradeable, and I thought that would be really strange for them to do. Yeah, and the fact that it was from dungeoneering too, it would cost so much. Mm-hmm. All right, but anyways, I think that covers what we wanted to mention about the about the barrows. Um, yeah, we, wait, we need to go over how they are farmers and dragon slayers, or were what? Yes. What? 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 <laughs> what you talking about? Uh, us? <laughs> what? We're all just like. Um, I guess Oh, oh, it's about, oh, oh because they have visit, oh. they drop visit, visages. Right. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. anyway. I, I love how I we all were just like, um, what? And Walter's <laughs> like, like oh, it's a joke. Uh. <laughs> but you said it so seriously. You did like, say it so seriously. It blew way over our heads. Yeah. Can we, can we have a no trolling rule in this podcast starting today? <laughs> no. At I least if, we have, if you haven't this. been here. Yeah, <laughs> crap. Oh well. Okay. I am too slow to deal with this today. Yeah. Don't make me think. Anyways, <laughs> ouch my brain. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna Is go. It... We're gonna move on well, forward a little bit. Unless it's pretty yeah. bad for saying this on podcast. That <laughs> we're saying yeah, this really. on. Wait, strange tokens have. Sorry, sir. Yes, 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 Robo. But before we get to that, uh, I would like to announce to make a. Um, Public service announcement that Gina now ports. Yay! Yay! 
So we should all give Gina a round of applause for one, finally getting a level 90, and two, learning two ports. Should, should I add into the announcement that I actually bothered to get a 99? Nice. Yeah. Which finished, finished all my tasks and got 99 prayer. There you go. And I paid back all my deaths on that too, so I like, don't know anything about it. There you go. Good job. <clears throat> so and that is our that is our public service announcement. Um, that I will do. Bye. Okay, bye. Um, and that's the end of the podcast. Bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Pharaoh's podcast. Go go. And yeah, so we're going to move on ahead into the community features, um, which was a collection of a, a whole bunch of little updates that kind of constituted one bigger update. Uh, it. It was li- a lot of little things, like they it was finally, awesome. yeah, they finally added the Naragi fairy ring, which is yay. So we can go back <laughs> and experience the fields all over. Again. Yes. So basically, yeah. think about it this way: the fact that it took them since March to get this in there means that the uh, post Birthright of the Dwarf stuff, we probably won't see that until next June. Yeah. Yeah. Yippee! Oh. Um, they also added a beam of light for all rares. And Dungeoneering Journals. Finally. I like that. That's, that's my favorite upgrade of the month right there. Yeah. Yeah. So Excuse it's me. the beams of light now highlight drops worth one million or more, as well as rare untradeables like effigies, champion Whoa, scrolls. Wait, 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 wait. Apparently we lore failed? No, only the no. token. Okay, never mind. It only does the token. Well, it's still my favorite upgrade. It's still, still good, though. That's, um, like, that's like mechanical fail. It's not necessarily lore. Yeah, well, we yeah. wish all, but... Maybe eventually. <laughs> the more valuable the drop, the more awe-inspiring the beam looks. This means that you can't screw over people in PVM when you're doing when you're not doing coin share, which has also been changed. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, clue scrolls don't get a beam of light, but will also be added. I'm assuming that's is that just elite or is that all? Because easy clue scrolls would be hard, stupid. Hard and elite should be the only. I like that though. The champion challenge scrolls are definitely. My god, yes. those are rare. I mean, there, there already is a chat, uh, something that pops up in chat for you, but still. But that was only it's added like recently, shiny. though. Shiny! That was only <laughs> added recently, the Can't chat say. thing. Yeah. It, it was added before I got my only champion scroll ever, so. Yeah, I got four by doing, I don't, I, like, it, within a hundred kills of four things, which means, of course, that my, if I, I ever go for it, um, it's gonna be like 10k kills per her thing, yeah, but... Okay. Is, is there any uh, pictures of that strange token beam fly? I want to see it. Um, no. Not sure. Not that up. I know of. I don't think anybody's gotten one since it happened. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's still, still rare. But, um... Yeah. Uh, let's see. Other things, because I just want to look through these. Uh, drop rate of ceramic scales was improved slightly, which is why the ceramic armor is so cheap. Oh, well, it was improved drastically, and then it was oh, re-nerfed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was like a 1 in 3 drop from the uh, from the Legions, which meant that you would actually turn a profit killing them every single time, because you were basically guaranteed a ceramic scale yeah. per keystone. So, keystones were anywhere from, you know, what, 400k to 1.2 mil. So, if you were doing the 400k one, you were getting a 600k profit every couple of keystones. And it was pretty great. Um, Chaos Giants had their drop tables rebalanced. They're better, but they're still shit. <laughs> <laughs> they have something yeah. they drop now, but yeah, not they enough. Are, they are still terrible to fight. Um, the fact that they removed them as a frost uh, as a fire giant slayer task just makes them completely useless. Nobody yeah. uses the dragon equipment. They're terrible. Uh, don't go there. Yeah. Um, Chaotix... It's a trap. Chaotix, this is great. Uh, if you you know don't want your Chaotic or something, you can destroy it and get half of its original token cost back. This only cool. works for Chaotix, and I presume it works for Gravid, whatever the hell they're called, as yeah. well. Gravid. Gravid's yeah, Gravite. Gravite free to play. Yeah, it makes um, sense. But, yeah, so, I mean, if you, say you have Chaotic Rapiers and you've got your Drygors now, you can destroy them and get your 100k tokens back or 150k tokens back. That could be uh, useful. I never thought about it that way. Yeah. I mean, because once you're, you've upgraded your stuff and you don't want the Chaotix, you can sell that back just to get you know, Dung XP, you can get the Charming M, so on and so forth. There you go. Um, alongside that uh, Squeal of Fortune, the uh, Planks thing that they did last week, they added a new Plank Maker NPC, and Taverly is actually kind of close to a bank. 
so, yeah. If Yay. you're somebody who doesn't like make using your spells, there you go. Or is just lazy and doesn't want to spend the money on plank make. <laughs> yep. Either way works. Uh, <laughs> and then just one one tiny little useful one is the uh, for divination, it's now become even easier to do because now you can press one through three. Instead so, of uh, clicking. <laughs> instead of having to click what you want to do with your energies when you're converting them. This, this change is incredibly useful for me who has 99 divination. Why couldn't yes. they do this before? I, I do I will use it though. I in, oh yeah. Oh, because I do go back and and gather energy because yeah, I'm it's not like paying that much for incandescent energy for my yeah. signs and porters and. and it's, it's surprisingly good money, actually. Yep. Um, <clears throat> the fact that they have not dropped drastically is very impressive. Yeah, I mean, people use the people use the signs of the porter, especially for. Oh yeah. Everything I know, yeah, I do. It's it's just an incredible item. Yeah, I love it. I mean, and I keep when I've gone and do, done mining tasks, every yes. time I see people with those with those items, and I just I just see the thing going around them, the little the wispy thing banking the item. And it's just like, yeah, this is <laughs> this is this is pretty good. Yep. And the fact that of course it'll be used for inventor too. Apparently, it's just going to make them even more yep. valuable. Yep. So, so this could be this could finish. this could remain our most valuable gathering skill in the game. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, um, I also want to mention a couple other things. Um, they, and this is this is one that Gina wanted me to mention that the hide that they added in the in the wardrobe they hi- added hide options for all of the um, for all the armor slots. So yes, you that can was really wear, useful. So you can wear your default clothes instead of instead of armor or whatever. Your your fancy pretty stuff. Yes, um, <coughs> they. Uh, I do want to mention that they added wings, which is great, but that's that's just a little aside because I I like that. But anyways, what were you saying? I thought I heard Robo. Oh, I said yeah, I like the default. Oh. I like how they can wear your default clothes over. <clears throat> yeah. Um they added a drag and drop function to the free, to your familiar and the GE and the bank. No, the bank was already there. It was the mainly the familiar and the GE, and that's useful for Ordering stuff in in a beast of burden, um, and they changed the broadcast filter finally. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think unless anybody does, anybody else have anything that they want to add? There are a whole bunch of other ones, but those are the ones that we here think was kind of the more important stuff. Um, just. For all the OCD people out there, burnt food and dungeoneering now stacks like everything else. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> okay. Because that um, was that I hated that forever. Yep. All right. Uh, shall we briefly touch on coin share changes in the eight minutes I have left? <laughs> yes. It happened. We're done. <laughs> Before I say, yeah. So, so they changed it. They uh, they now drop shards instead of coins, and you can sell the shards for stuff. That's great. What I have written so, on my notes is, "Yay, mod Jack." Yes, that's and about that's it. about it. Basically, yep. It's a cool. I do. I um. I do like that. I do like the change. It makes sense. I like that he used the number one twenty instead of going with the easy one hundred that causes that runs into all sorts of problems with multiplication. Um. I, like it's it's just a cool it's a cool change and it's a desperately needed change because coin share was broken. Um, yeah. Like it, yeah, it was. It just it just. It, it was broken. <clears throat> yeah. God sword shard shards. Yes. Yes. Yay! It's like body body all over again. <laughs> exactly. Um, you break let's so see. Bad? They they fixed the world map so Thank it God. actually loads really well. But it's they great. haven't I love it. fixed the mini map yet. God damn it! But they haven't fixed the mini map. That's correct. Uh, Ashdale tutorial. This is very pretty. Um, it's the brand new tutorial. It's set on a new. Separate island that is your origin. It breaks the lore. <laughs> Yay, lore <laughs> fails. Breaking history. <laughs> See, they finally That's released what it. That's I called it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Noni Man says, "quote unquote" island. Yeah, we don't actually know where it is, and it's more of a. Uh, <laughs> it puts you kind of randomly thingy. in the middle of the ocean. Apparently, yeah, you're visiting the eastern lands. It's definitely in the eastern lands, though. 
they had something on the wiki where it said like direction like they have the arrows saying where it was something like it was some really creepy location but oh yeah creepy? it's gone it's not on the wiki anymore for that reason <laughs> I wonder but, uh, why I wonder what it's if you used to the sexton right like to give you like a location yep yeah I never thought about that either but then again I haven't done the new tutorial just never got around yeah. to it um, it's it's pretty. It's it's good for an introduction. It just has some major lore issues that need to be fixed. <laughs> and hopefully, yeah. Stu is addressing those because he has mentioned that. Yep, Stu is awesome at this. Yep, well, he he even is. If I, even if the lore fails or fixed, it still didn't seem like the best tutorial to me. Like it was, it's kind of lacking in the story aspect. I mean, like they had that big. Some heroes are hit. some heroes are born. Some heroes are made. But this hero has an even more unlikely situation. Hey guys, yeah. let's go. Let's go to the mainland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I did hear a lot of praise on Twitter about about it from from various players. I, I haven't seen much in the for, on the way of the forums, but the general response has been positive for it. Like yep. if I were to make that, I would have made like the vision start out, like kind of like the burning world, and, like players standing there, Gucci waking up. Oh my god, it's color to the player. Uh, Could that be a lot better? Yeah, like graphics wise and mechanics wise, it's good, but just the story is just. <laughs> yeah, well, they, <laughs> well graphics, there's, there's some massive lore in the game easily. I'm, I'm, I personally like Birthor, uh, Birthor better because yes, it, I thought the storyline of Birthor was better, yeah. but I feel like the experience of the new one is better. Well, it's yeah. better and it leads you into the game itself rather than forcing you to. Um, go through this whole story thing and then just kind of throw you out there awkwardly. Yeah, I, li- I like the representation of the Birth Hope story better, but I'm still not really liking the troll thing. Really. It just didn't work as well. I, I quite like the troll theme because it brought you, like, to one of this conflict that you would normally never see, the troll wars. There were, like, three major troll wars, and yeah. now there's no real, like, spotlight on it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know. We'll see what they do with it, but yeah. Yeah. Well, it's kind of a wait and see to see what Stu ends up fixing about it. And, but yeah. Stu can't fix something about it. I, I, I'm sure he can. It's just a question of whether, whether when. it'll go through or not. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so, the Ashdale tutorial is nice. And, there Stu you go. Is a badass yes, running. Stu is always a badass. We need we need the J mods to start doing more live streams. Yeah. Cookies for Stu. We, we yes. and we don't that, we're that not talking about fourteen podcast, hour guys. live streams. We're talking about just like the the one hour live streams. Even hell, once a week would be fine. Like, although that or, fourteen hour live stream was was hilarious. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, that that was an adventure in itself. Yes. It was it was a great quest. But yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, that that. Yeah, that's that's kind of that. Um, I, where did it? Where was this mentioned? I do want to say. I want to say this thing about Scargroth. Where was that? That was in the community features. Where was that? Like Walter has a, something in the thread about Scargroth being a lone wolf, and I have no idea where this came from. Oh, that was. I don't know where it went. Yeah. Uh, oh, was that a Twitter Ma- Ma- thing? Osborne, yeah, Maud Osborne was talking about it. He said that, uh... Wait, what was it? Uh, he was a lone wolf. For, he he actually showed him a good light, though. It was, it was like he's a noble killer, a noble... Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. He's a god killer. Yeah. And a lady killer. He went, he went out and killed gods, and so... Who said that? Who said that later, lady killer pun? Who said <laughs> it? I've been one up. <laughs> I'm just so hopeful. Oh, my God. <laughs> But yeah, it oh says, dear. it says, uh, I think the question was whether Bandos would fight Tus- would rather fight Tuska or Skargaroth. And Band- they said Bandos would fight Tuska. Um, Skargaroth was a noble, a lone wolf killer looking to end the tyranny of gods, so. Yeah. Yep. Which I ironic. find it, it, it's even more ironic that Guthix was the one that killed him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Of all, of like all. <laughs> but yep. Yeah, um, We'll mention Tuska a little bit more as she features into the BTS, but for now, we're going to mention, talk a little bit about this uh, 
above the why is Walter spamming? It's because it's Walter. Ashdale. Oh my god, Ashdale. I'm trying to figure out this sextant thing. Um Trust me, no, I'm when, slowly it's getting Okay, so I'm just gonna read this. I'm not sure So are we are we hitting on the uh, Lord podcast now? Yeah, after I read this because Walter apparently wants me to say it. Um, oh, yeah. Morwenna is implied to be on, to only be attacking because Gudric the Dwarf stole from her tomb when he was younger. Morwenna was brought back by Zamorak to serve as one of his champions. Best champion ever. Uh, yes. <laughs> her backstory is a lore fail. Well done. Well done, Jagex. Lore fail in several directions. Several layers. And apparently the new ring that they introduced is the most powerful free-to-play ring, and is an amazing ring for new players starting out. because it's it crit adds, bonuses that make it so OP. Yeah, it adds nice crit bonuses. And it's kept on death. So, yippee. Anyways, oh, moving right along. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. I found coordinates for Ashdale. Um, I'm at the docks right now. It's 18 degrees, 28 minutes south, 35 degrees, 45 minutes east, and I can screenshot this. Oh, that sounds like, that sounds like where it is on the world map when where we yeah. have the because it's it's near location. the eastern lands. That's cool. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, we're gonna I, move on. I need to go. So, yeah. you guys enjoy Very the well, right. section. Right. It's lovely podcasting with you all. Uh, we'll yes. <clears throat> yeah. See you Goodbye. next time. But yeah, so we're gonna move on into the above the lore podcast, which was bringing back Zamorak. And <clears throat> what they talked a lot about was where Zamorak stands now after the Battle of Lumbridge. He knows he's weaker, and he knows that he won't be able to get in any any direct confrontations because he will lose. Um, but he has, but he realizes that he has to appro- improve himself and obtain the Stone of Jazz by other means. So it's kind of like he's living his philosophy more now than ever. He wants to get back into the running. And that comes from the stone, staff of Armadale, something of great power, etc. Yeah, I like how they represent him in that. It's like, even though Zamorak lost, it's not like it's over for him. I still have to say... Tricks up his sleeve. You have to say? I Well, I was going to say that... Well, if let's see if Zami actually likes his own philosophy. <laughs> well, I mean, he's been... Well... I want to say he's been living with it for the last several thousand years, but I guess he's technically been in stasis for the last however long. Or has he been? Do they... They don't know if Zamorak was in stasis. They said there's he no was evidence in... of him communicating, so it's basically implied. They said uh, they said that he was like a barnacle clinging to the outside of... Um, clinging to the outside of the Edict Shield, where it was weakest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which was Demonheim, apparently. Yep. Um, been fun. They also mentioned they mentioned a little bit of something that I found very interesting about the God Wars, um, <coughs> especially with regards to the wilderness. Like everybody recognizes that, or everybody everybody would call him out. Everybody, whatever, about the the last act of the of the God Wars, where which ended up waking up Guthix, and that was the purging of four and three, four and three, and they mentioned that basically. Zamorak was staring defeat down the throat. Like, he was surrounded on all sides and had nothing else to do. Um, it, it was his, it was an act of desperation and he created the wilderness to save himself by unleashing that huge it, burst of power. It sounds like it was more like a last hurrah. Yeah, and Maud Osborne says that he doesn't even know if Zamorak was aware just how big the devastation would be. So, yeah, and Raven, Ra- Mod Raven mentioned he doesn't even know if Zamorak expected to survive it. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's an interesting, interesting way to look at. It. It's a lot more interesting than hey, let's go destroy stuff. It's yeah. like there's actually a good reason to do it. Yeah, it makes it, it not look so bad. Yeah, not just evil for the sake of it. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't think we'd ever been mentioned. We'd ever been told much about that specific act before, like that, that single magical blast that leveled the wilderness. Like that changed the world. Yeah, 
uh, but we just known it by that kind of description. Like it was Zamorak did it, and it blew things up. Whereas there might be more. There, well, there is more to it than just that. Um. Yeah, I hope that goes to game sometime. Like they explain it in game, like maybe Zamorak saying it. Yeah, would be very cool. I mean, they they do have content. <coughs> slated for Zamorak of some variety and obviously aside from the Christmas event which we'll talk about in a few minutes but they have they have other stuff in the pipeline if I remember correctly I oh, yeah, I'd, like to, I'd just like to mention did anyone notice that the Joy of Zero's podcast is still sticking on the more form but the Zamorak one is G- GGO? <laughs> at God Bias <laughs> yeah. God Bias <laughs> It's Biased but yeah, um, uh, Osborne does not consider Zamorak to be a Majorat anymore. This is intriguing. So he he's not useful for the ritual, nor does he receive any power from them. Um, when you give up, your, uh, when you become a god, you give up the rules that apply for your race. And this this was doubled, I guess, with regards to Guthix. When Guthix ascended, he gave up being an Aragi, and that's why they. That's why they mentioned that Guthix was the last Naragi, like, but only for a few seconds. Yeah, but only for a few minutes because of his daughter. But yeah, so, um, talking a little, looking a little bit forward and talking about World, World Event Two, Zamrak would probably support Bandos, but that's if he even cares about it, which is. I don't think it's debatable. It's just going to be like this, the event might be going on at the same time. Yeah. Um. Is there anything else we want to mention about this about the podcast? Um. Not really too much. The rest is a little bit just fun facts oh, well. here and there. A lot of it is kind of rehash, um, or stuff that we'd already they'd either we'd either been hinted at or been kind of half told directly. Well, they did soon to expand on the point where he wants to get the Snow Jazz back. They did say he's going to, they're going to consider making the heist quest for it where Zamorak gets a bunch of followers and just tries to steal the Snow Jazz and that they are considering that maybe the player can influence whether he wins or not, but I feel that's kind of a bit weird. Like, set up Sleece Gaze Game and then Zamorak just steals it. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what about Osborne changing the lore so it isn't terrible? Walter mentioned this. Oh, for Nomad. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. He's changing the lore, so we're not mad. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, yeah, Nomad, apparently Nomad is, would find it hard to follow a single god, but he would probably ally with Zamorak, so. It, if there is an entourage in a future piece of content, Nomad would likely be one of the options. I don't think the Majra would be since you can't just do those. Yeah. Um, apparently they have been discussing it recently. He's someone we want to tell stories about in before Fangride spam. And they're Fang, doing... Fang isn't here. I know. That's why I say in before. Because he's not here. But, um, and also I do want to commend Walter on figuring out the Chaos Elemental hint that suggests that Hannibus will play a role in some way during the fate of the gods. And Hannibus is the leader of the Dragon Riders? Is that right? Yeah, uh, he's, he's just... the last surviving Dragon Rider. Yeah, he, rider. he wrote the Last Riders journal. Okay. And when I say last surviving, that doesn't mean that he's still alive. It just means he's the last one to survive. Yep. Yeah, he's the one who says you want to side with Zero Swords America because if they did, they'd be sealing their fate. And in fact, by not doing that, Okay, then yes, I think that covers what we wanted to mention in this. Yes, and then we're going to move on into the BTS for December. Um, there, it it is rather underwhelming. We were hoping for quests, and we didn't get one. But <coughs> oh well, <laughs> it's uh, just it kind of is what know. it is at this point. Um, there is a Christmas event that is called Up to Snow Good that is okay. being developed by Mod Anna, so we 
are, are confirmed to see somebody die. Uh, oh, sorry. What we are confirmed to see is a pet. Yes, we are confirmed to see a pet. Um, apparently, it, as yeah, um, apparently in on Twitter. Actually, I don't want to say apparently because I saw it firsthand on Twitter. Uh, Montana says that she doesn't t- check her Twitter for a few days, and she comes back to people accusing me of killing Santa. <laughs> I, she doesn't kill off every character, and then Mod <laughs> Hugh, with his very helpful response, says dot 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 most. <laughs> and then Anna gives a frowny face. You're not helping. <laughs> of course, Mod Osborne shows up and says, "I saw Anna killing Santa Claus underneath the mistletoe last night." Oh <laughs> man, I can see them just having too much fun with her with that with that perception. Oh they could man! At least like a bonus video, like, or like a parody of J Mod singing that or something. Me <laughs> <laughs> too. Oh dear God! <laughs> well, hey, those, I, the Christmas I carols written fill. especially for us. They'll need that. I had, I had my fill of J Mod music videos after Take Me Back, Take Me Back, Take Me Back. <laughs> oh God! Oh dear! <laughs> Needs more mold hair. Yeah. Anyways, um, but yeah. So the the Christmas event is basically Zamorak going rage mode. Because he lost his, his at the Battle of Lumbridge, so he's get, apparently going to get revenge on the people of Gilinor. And what a better way than to ruin Christmas? I'm all right with it, so long as the way he's doing it is like isn't completely evil, but like isn't completely evil. Yeah, I would I would call yeah. it naughty. That's a good. Point. Yeah. <laughs> like. It's just just going around causing trouble instead of like actually just destroying the thing. Well, you can either revel of... in a Zamorak in Christmas filled with chaos and disorder, or you can have a traditional happy pudding and present filled holiday. I have to admit though, I'm pretty traditional in that song. So I'm gonna have to help out Sarah Dillon for the cookie. Where what is it? Chaos cookies. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. It makes it makes its return. <laughs> Uh, I just, I'm trying to think of something creative to say, like, use coal on one of the demons or something to try to prove a point. Like, hey, you're being kind of mean. Like, I don't know. I can't think of anything funny. But chaos cookies, that's funny. Chaos cookies <laughs> will make its return to the seer cast. I know y'all were all missing, oh, missing dear. that. <laughs> Kitten's like, why did I make that picture? <laughs> well, well, really, it's it's just... I mean, it was funny for an instant, and then I didn't understand afterward. It's just, well, it's like you why? Know, did, no, you know why what? No, is I'm, this? I don't even. Yeah, I'm just going with why, and I don't understand what I'm doing sometimes. <laughs> well, oh well, it makes us laugh, so yes, we're doing it something does. right. I have to admit that that shirt does look pretty snazzy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the pug. Oh my god. That we're talking about. I guess I'll just put it up there. Walter just posted a picture in. Chat about a winter really pug sweater, <laughs> but yeah, it looks so, suitably itchy. <laughs> yeah, all hell king itchy. That's sure, cool. why not? <laughs> but yeah, so so we've yeah so the Christmas event is that's this week or next week? I think it's this week. Hope it's this week. Oh, Don't know. Cool. Any any confirmations? Do we know? Uh, well, they have to do the BTS video for it, so it's probably... Oh, maybe not week. then. So it might be next week. And well, we're doing this on the 1st, so we're talking about it for the week of the 2nd. Um, this should be up tonight. There's Dear no Osborne Claus, all I want for Christmas is a Menophyte Pantheon faction. <laughs> Lime, please. <laughs> Anyways. Um, also, this month is going to be the second world event, which is entitled The Bird and the Beast. Uh, we've talked about this ad nauseum in other podcasts, so we're not going to mention a whole lot about it, other than it is confirmed now, as opposed to just speculation and educated guessing, that Armadil and Bandos will be, will be fighting it out, and that Bandos is going to get cru- oh. And that- A god will be- <laughs> And a god will die. Well, it's god, <laughs> but, you know. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Yeah. Sorry, Bandos. <laughs> I'm, I, I will be pledging my support to Armadil and yeah. may or may not be activer than I have been the past few weeks. 
I do like that they're gonna have it like being more areas than just the crater area or something. Yeah, like I do have, agree. Oh, and they're also gonna have that world PvP. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. I and especially considering how much effort they're putting into PvP right now. Um I know that Mod Pi is constantly in communication with people about that. So hopefully they'll they're taking a look at it and this will help a lot with that regard as well. So even gives even gives a better sense that war is going on, see, seeing people die on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's uh, this is the caravan content that we were talking that we talked about like a year ago. Um, yep. The godless, the god seek adventures. You create towers of war. Yeah, we've already talked about all of this. So. Yay, World Event 2. That's this month. Yay. Um, also, it's happening. Yeah. Also this month <clears throat> that we had been teased about before, but we didn't know much about, was the Harbingers of Tusca. And these are level 92 Slayer Critters that are called the A-Root. They also A-Root? have teeny legs. A-Root. Yeah, they have, they have large Comedic- bodies and teeny legs. Comedically small legs. Yeah. <laughs> They encourage you to use your best gear as they are able to switch combat styles at will and can use all the elements of the evolution of combat. Sounds like fun. Um, I do want to say explicitly they said in this behind the scenes, quote yeah. unquote, you'll certainly be able to wade in using the momentum ability, but masters of the adrenaline bar will find far greater success. AK, learn to EOC. Yeah, basically... Stop riding on momentum, please. It is not funny, and it does not make you cooler. Yes. Yay! Yay! Oh, yeah, I like uh, they're going to have some, like, lore to it, too. It's not going to just be just journal drops. Yep. Hey, wait, wait, yeah. wait. Can I just say that I'm a little skeptical about this? Because they told us that we're going to get lore with Barrow's Rise of the Six. Oh, they actually had it in the BTS, though. Did that happen in the BTS with the Barrow's, too? I don't think so. But I'm not sure. They also told us we'd have lore with divination, and oh. we we all know how that ended up. Or be in, in some way, yeah. With, with orange, orange cookies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, have like cave drawings or something, because that's like a different way to tell a story. It's like have it more open to depression, like just have like pictures of gods yeah. killing each other. Yeah, yeah but they're yeah. they're still gonna like have them as like monster drops, which is what I'm just kind of getting. Of. It's like, you know, do something a little more <laughs> interesting. I mean, yeah. that's what the walls are for. Like, you can't get walls for a drop. Hope so. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I mean, first it'd be walls, then it'd be pillars, and then suddenly <laughs> the entire world's caving in. <laughs> and then you drop a pillar on Gilinor and GG. <laughs> and whoops. <laughs> you have just been pillared. Anyways, um, yeah, so there, there's the rewards. Include Razorback Gauntlets, which are level 90 melee gloves. Um, new bones that are in between Dragon and Frost Dragon bones, so they're going to be rather um, rather expensive. And a piece of a Tusca Mask that can be traded or completed, f- or traded and completed for combat XP, because lol XP. Um, the update will also apparently have an early bird bonus, which I can't utilize because I'm not 92 Slayer. And they'll be found near the Phoenix Lair. Interesting <coughs> use of a interesting use of kind of a dead area. Yeah. No one really goes there. Yeah. And before it's also dead content. Of course, I have gone to the Phoenix Lair area because there's an elder tree up there and it's close yeah. to the fairy ring, but Well yeah, now now that that's there, but I'm like usually but like, yeah, hunter there's not generally much... doesn't happen. It's Field. Even the Phoenix Lair, it doesn't really get used much unless you're going for a Phoenix Eggling. Yeah. Like, I mean, the daily XP isn't that much for the amount of time that's spent to go get it, and it's kind of hard to get there, so. Yeah. December's going to be pretty busy lore wise, so I mean, like, just think of, like, Zamrax doing Christmas, two gods fighting each other, and then the Harbingers of Tusk are coming to kill him. Well, hopefully. Hopefully. Could the Harbingers of Tusca be, like, foreboding thing that someone else may be coming soon? Well, isn't that what a Harbinger is? Yeah. Usually you say a Harbinger of Doom. That's often the the use of the word Harbinger. And that's foreshadowing Doom, so perhaps. But 
Tuska's never been on Gilinor, so... Well, well, if she was on Gilinor, we'd certainly know it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there wouldn't... Yeah. There, there wouldn't be much of a Gilinor. Um, at least if Tuska had her way. Yeah, so suddenly a big portal is going to open and she's just going to come charging out. In before Tuska defeats Armadil in... The second God Wars, or second. Oh my God! Why? <laughs> and also, if, if it's from a portal, then let's hope that he doesn't bring an army of portal kids with her. Oh dear God! Yes. <laughs> oh dear God! <laughs> no, please. Bandos gets yeah, a free yeah. pass. But this, but Bandos this does. But Bandos gets a free pass to surviving through the second world event because Armadillo got crushed by Tuska. But this does <laughs> beg, beg the question: Who would win, Tuska or penguins? Um, I want to say penguins because penguins. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> because penguins OP. How much do penguins like pork? True. That's a good question. Nope. Uh, I mean, it depends on how close the fish it is, or at least Tusca pork. Yeah, or at least to them to see. Huh? Is, uh, you know, I don't know. They could go well, cannibal one day, and like we'd never notice. I suppose they all. I suppose everything tastes like chicken, so they might already be cannibals. Yeah. Oh well, we'll figure it out. Gina, Gina has been paying attention to the chat and says, <laughs> "Do I want to know how the portal kids got in?" <laughs> nope. The We'd like answer to know that is nope. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, but oh man, like. There, the, it could it could be a very up month in terms of lore. I could also see it being a big disappointment because the focus on the of the world event can't may not be it, it probably won't be in the lore kind of way. But maybe we get a, a little shot in the arm. But we'll see. Um, well, I like the thing with the, uh, the thing with the last time where if you got ranked up, you could talk to the uh, general of the army and you could. Learn a little tidbits. Hope yeah. Transcripts. Yeah. The, I mean, it's obviously not going to be the exact same as the first world event, but I, they they should be adding in features, the good stuff from the first world event because it's the second world event is only six weeks, and the reason for that is because the first one was too long, and they learned from that, and there you go. But yeah, so I mean, I, that pretty much covers everything that we wanted to mention. Um, Unless there's something silly on the Twitter and forums that is relevant, I don't think there really is at this point. Um, <clears throat> then I think that's that. Pretty much is it. I think the next our next podcast will be. I want to say maybe after the release of the second world event as a kind of checkup, but it yeah. might not be until after the next. Um, the next BTS because Christmas. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, in the luckily, event that Go ahead. I'm just saying like some of well, never mind. Actually I don't know anyone's schedules. Just thinking some of us may or may not be traveling, but I know this week was a very stupid week for <laughs> uh podcast times. Yeah, but it was it was not a fun week. The last two or three weeks have not been have not been fun for scheduling reasons yeah. <laughs> yeah like the i'm gonna schedule a podcast for the middle of the week at the in the evening and there were two people here i'm like well this is great <laughs> no <laughs> offense to lime on. but i don't think lime and i can do a full podcast just by ourselves <laughs> and i don't think anybody wants us to do <laughs> <laughs> it, it would be a little bit terrifying it would just turn into port spam yeah yeah yeah. And I'm grinning like a madman at the prospect of that, but I know that nobody wants it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe but one hey, day. at least Maybe. we got Gina into ports. Yeah. So, baby steps, baby steps. Yes. <laughs> Yay, ports. Um, Yay. But yeah, so uh, that pretty much covers what we wanted to mention. So thank you all for watching, and we will see you guys again next time. In, in the event Bye. that... We'll <laughs> Bye. In the Bye. event we don't see you until January, then Merry Limesmith and goodbye. Yes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year if we don't see you until then. So, God, it's scary saying those words right now. <laughs> Damn, it's <laughs> yeah. December. But yeah, so see you all later. <laughs>